children do better with structure and not being pressured. The place children learn best how to eat is at the family table with parents or a loving family member. If you don't regularly sit down to eat with your family, this can feel like too much to ask. But it doesn't have to be so hard. Family meals help kids eat the amount that is right for them, help children learn to like new foods and improve nutrition. Family meals can be fun too. What's important about family meals is that you eat together. Begin by eating what you are eating now, but eat it together at the table. Turn off the TV and talk to each other. If you're having fast food, take the time to go into the restaurant or bring the food home and eat together. If you're having a frozen pizza, sit together with a glass of milk and enjoy your food and each other. Maybe it will be easier to start with breakfast on the weekend. Don't give up. Trying to make family meals happen is that important. Research suggests that children who eat with their families at least four times per week do better in school and are less likely to get into trouble. They are also more likely to weigh what is healthy for them and be happier too. Hi! Hey. Hi Aunt Melissa! We're hungry. Maybe you could help us figure out a way to make some healthy tacos. That sounds great. First we're going to start with my plate. It's actually easy to remember. We want to make sure that we have half of it with fruits and vegetables, about a quarter of it with protein like beans and chicken, and another quarter full of whole grains. And don't forget your serving of milk. You want to make sure that there's lots of color. And where do you think color comes from? Fruits vegetables. and vegetables. Exactly. And even whole grains like blue corn or yellow corn or dark rice can add a lot of color to your plate. Let's get started and build these tacos. Let's All do right. This. Now let me see how close you've been paying attention. What are we going to start with first? Fruits and vegetables. Oh, great job. You want to make sure that you're getting lots of vitamin C and vitamin A in your food. Actually, your peppers are going to have both. Tomatoes have lycopene, which can help protect your heart. Um, and plus, don't they give it a lot of flavor? Mm -hmm. It does. Now, limes are a superfood because they not only have a, a tremendous amount of vitamin C, but they also have antibacterial properties. So go ahead and squeeze a little lime in there. So you've got your whole grains, right? And you want to choose whole grains most of the time because the refined flours are going to slow you down. Have you ever gone out with your friends and you've just loaded up on like chips? or even pretzels, or just foods that have a lot of white flour in them. <laughs> Sometimes. And how do you feel after that? Tired. You feel tired. Terrible. What they do with refined flours is they essentially, they get the flour and they take out everything in there that just makes you feel healthy and gives you long lasting energy. So you again, want to always try to choose those whole grains so that you can make it through your day and really have the energy and brain power to be able to accomplish what you want to do. My name is Marcus. My favorite vegetable is cucumbers because they are really healthy. The first course is salad. The second course is cheese. And third course, whatever mom gives me for dinner. This is how you make a salad. Measurements in liters and milliliters on the other side of the container. What's the difference between a teaspoon and a tablespoon? Well, obviously one is larger than the other one, but in a recipe, that small size difference can turn into a really big deal. Maybe not if you're putting three teaspoons or three tablespoons of chocolate syrup into, uh, say, vanilla ice cream, but if you're putting three tablespoons of salt in a soup, yuck, or three tablespoons of chili powder in a noodle dish, watch out. You can remember that a teaspoon is smaller than a tablespoon because a teacup would sit on a table. And you can remember that there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon because there are three letters in T. When your recipe calls for an amount of something and you don't have the exact measuring tool you need, sometimes the solution is simple. If a recipe calls for two-thirds cup of shortening, you only have a one-third cup measuring cup, you just use it twice. But what if the recipe calls for a one-eighth cup of shortening and the smallest measuring cup you have is one-fourth cup? 
Trying to eyeball it won't be very exact, but uh, if you know how many tablespoons are in a fourth of a cup, you can use your tablespoon measures. Or if you are increasing a recipe and it calls for eight tablespoons of cooking oil, you can either go measure, pour, measure, pour, measure, pour eight times, or you can measure it in a one half cup once and be done. Here are a few equivalents you may want to memorize. Three teaspoons in one tablespoon and four tablespoons in a quarter cup. Old recipes sometimes call for a dash or a pinch or a speck. That is less than an eighth of a teaspoon. Here's a way to measure the liquid measurements. Gallon is the biggest. Inside a gallon go four quarts. Each quart gets two pints. Each pint gets two cups. GQPC. GQPC. How can we remember that? Let's see. Uh, gargantuan quartz pour clumsily. Uh, yeah. Good queens pray continually. Uh, Grandma Quincy plants carrots. Well, you know, whatever works for you. If I only have half a bag of chocolate chips, I can only make half a recipe of chocolate chip cookies. So what I need to, to do is to take the recipe that I have and multiply it times one half. Every single ingredient gets multiplied times one half, or in other words, divided by two. So I have my recipe on the back of my cookie bag, and it says two and one quarter cups of flour. So two and one quarter cups, I multiply that times one half, or in other words, I divide it by two, and one half of one, or one half of two cups, I'm sorry, is one cup. And one half of a quarter of a cup will be one eighth. So I put one and an eighth cup of flour in here. I also put the next ingredient of baking soda in here. It asks for one teaspoon of baking soda, so I dumped in one times one half is a half. One half of a teaspoon of baking soda in there. It also called for one teaspoon of salt, so it ended up being one teaspoon times a half and one times one half will give us one half. So one half a teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of baking soda, they're all in here, I don't know if you can see it on the top there, but I'm gonna dump it in here. So you have it all prepared like one of those cooking shows. All right, I guess I need a wooden spoon to mix everything together. All right, the next ingredient was softened butter. I needed one cup of softened butter, one cup, times one half gives us half of one cup. So this is a half a cup of softened butter. Take that and I put it in there. It's not really good for you, but it sure tastes good. All right, there's my butter. The next ingredient I had was three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now three quarters, this is a fraction, times one half, to multiply three quarters times one over two, we essentially just multiply the denominators. And three times one will just give us three. So it's three over our denominator of four times two. Four times two is eight. So what I end up with is three eighths of a cup of sugar. So that goes right into our mixture, gets stirred around a little bit. Three eighths of a cup of sugar. I had the same thing with my brown sugar. It asked for three quarters of a cup. Three quarters times one half gives me three eighths. I compress the brown sugar so you can maybe see the little spots of brown sugar in there. That gets mixed right in. Going pretty well so far. All right. The next ingredient it asked for was one teaspoon of vanilla. I put one times a half will give us one half. So I have a half teaspoon of vanilla right in there already. I actually put that in before I did everything else. And the final ingredient was two eggs. Two eggs times one half will give us just one egg. And I have one egg inside of this tiniest little one here. And that will go right into our, our recipe. So now when I mix all of these parts together, I'm going to get a nice mixture and then they ask you later to add your chocolate chips. And we saw that I poured my chocolate chips in here. 
So after I mix those up, I'm going to have to stick them on a cookie sheet, and they're ready, and hopefully they'll be good. So while I'm putting these cookies on the tray, I'll just give a brief review. If you need to multiply, if you need to make a recipe in half, you need to half the recipe, what you're doing is every single item you're going to multiply times one half. If it's a whole number, it's just like dividing by two. And if it's a fraction, what you're going to end up doing is you'll multiply the numerator times one, and you'll multiply the denominator times two. See, you're just multiplying whatever fraction it is times one over two, and that will give you your new amounts for your new recipe. So, I'm going to enjoy my cookies, and I hope that you guys enjoy your week. Have fun, and look for math around you. It's breakfast time, and I need some coffee. So it's time to visit Mel's Diner in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Now that I've got some coffee in my system, I think it's time to order some ham and eggs. What's that over there? Oh, hey Elvis. Now that was tasty. The check is here, and I found a coupon. Looks like I'm going to get to save a little money. 15% off. Usually people leave about 15% tip, but I've been a waiter. I'm going to leave 20. Let's go ahead and make this simple. Two bucks, and I'm out. Welcome to another edition of Math Snacks with Miss Glovely and Miss Wonderful. Today's episode is on adding and subtracting fractions. Hey, Miss Wonderful, let's do some th work with fractions today. Sounds good. How about if we start with some very basics about fractions? I like basics. Fractions are kind of confusing for me. Okay. Let's pretend that this is one whole thing, and it's kind of large. Yeah, but I, it could be a candy bar. It could be a candy bar, but it's a mighty big giant candy bar. Is it chocolate? Always. Okay. It always has to have chocolate. Chocolate candy. Okay. I like that. Well, let's pretend that we're going to split that candy bar. You want me to cut it in half? No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you your half. Okay. And how do you suppose we could prove that that really is your half? Well, I can lay it on here and see, and it, it kind of looks like a half, but until I see the other half, I don't really know. You might be trying to cheat me out of a half. So would you So would you like my half to I prove it? I would like it? your half to prove it. Okay, there you go. You know, my mom used to always say when we had to divide something at home, uh -huh. whoever got to cut it in half, the other one got to choose which half they wanted. So I guess so you'd get to choose which one because I cut them uh -huh. in half. Okay. So how many halves did it take for us to have that whole candy bar? It took two, but I'm still checking to make sure they're even. Okay. Okay, they're still even. Okay. It took two of them to make that one candy bar. Okay. Well, let's say we have another friend join us, and now we want equal portions. And that's what's important about fractions. It's like you. You don't want to get gypped out of any of the candy bar. Let's say we have another no, friend wait. join us. How okay. many pieces is it going to take now to fill to, to make three. it? Three. We need three pieces. Right. So they would be the size of one, one third. third. I'm going to... Double check. Double it. check. Make sure that you know that we actually get a whole candy bar and they're all the same size. Okay, there so you go. Three thirds. So three thirds make that whole candy bar. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it works for all fractions. If they're cut into fourths, how many would it take to fill the candy bar? Four. Four. You know what I think is funny though. What? Because a fourth is smaller piece 
than the third. Yes, it is. But four is bigger than three. I think, right. I think so that's you, always kind of confusing. So I think you're right, and I think students get confused by that too because they think because that denominator is a larger numeral mm -hmm. than the third that it should be a larger piece, but they have to remember that it takes four of these to fill the same amount of space as three of these. I'm going to check you, Miss Blood. Okay. Just to make sure. She just never trusts me. Uh -huh. I just got to double check you. I don't uh, understand. Why four, you don't trust me? And a, because you're going to try to get more of that candy bar. I know it. <laughs> four, you might be right. And a fourth. You might be right. Okay. Okay. You try to trick me all the time. So. I, I, I have been known to in the past, but I'm not trying to trick you today. Okay. I think we've, I think we've kind of established that, however, whatever number the denominator is, that's how many pieces are in the whole candy bar. Or the so whole this would whatever. Be five of these make an equal one. And six of those equal one. And eight of these equal one. Which, oh, she's going to check me on this last one. She's just not sure I'm still telling the truth. Well, you know, I know how you are. Yeah, I know you like to have your candy bar, too. But do and you, you know, you already tricked me on the money thing earlier, so... Do you, but do you notice how the pieces are each getting a little bit smaller each time because it takes more of them to fill that same amount of space? Okay. So there are eight, eight of them. Okay, great. One eight, two eights, three eights, four eights, five eights, six eights, seven eights, eight eights. Make a hole. Make a hole. Eight over eight makes one. Okay. Okay. So if we're going to do some addition and subtraction like you promised uh -huh. for this episode. Yeah, I did say we're going to add and subtract fractions. You so. did. Okay. Then what would the problem look like? If I wanted you to add three eighths and two eighths, what would it look like? Oh, that's easy. I'm going to write it down because you know me. I'm pretty much a visual person. Three eighths plus two eighths is. Whoops. Can you show that one to me? One eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Uh huh. Plus two more eighths. What do you have all together? And if I push them together, I have. Five eighths. Five eighths. My teacher taught me that it's joining sets together. Right. And okay. what, now a common mistake would be for kids to add both the top, like you did. Mm -hmm. But sometimes kids want to add the eight and the eight together and get sixteen. But if That's you do silly, they're eight. They didn't change. They didn't change. You're right. So you're you are correct. Five eighths. Okay. Want to try another one? Sure. What if I ask you to I'm ready. add? I'm ready. Um, how about one sixth one and one sixth plus one sixth? I bet I can do it in my head. You think? I think. I'm going to answer it and then I'll check. Okay. Two sixths. Okay, let's see if you're right. Here's one sixth and one sixth more joined together makes two sixths. You're right. But. Look at what else we ask you to do. Can you leave those there? Mm -hmm. Is there a better way we can write that? Instead of 2 sixths, or another way we could write it would be to find something it equals, which is? Well, it equals a third, but how'd you know that? How did I know that? Well, I, I know to simplify here. my fractions by a common factor. They both have a 2 in them. So if we divide both both of those by two, I get one third. And sounds I, like magic to me. It sounds like magic. Well, I want to instead of using two pieces, I want my whole thing. So two sixths is the same as one third. I see that two sixths and one third are the same. I'm trying to figure out how to put this on here so we see it clear. I see that two sixths and one third do equal each other. Still looks like magic to me on how you knew that, but you just might be really, really smart. <laughs> you think? I think. Okay, okay. Miss Global. Okay, what happens now if we, would you rather keep adding or would you like to subtract? I want to try adding a harder one because these were way too easy problem. for me because I'm smart. Okay, what if I want you to add one half, one half, and one fourth? Let me get it together here. Okay. Here's a half. Mm -hmm. I move the paper up here. A half and one fourth. Yeah, how much do you have? I know what you think I'm going to say. You think I'm going to say two sixths. Oh, 
I will because you said you'll add these and you'll add these and that's a common thing kids do. But I know you've already told me that's not right. <laughs> so I've got to think about this. A half plus a fourth. Do you know exactly how much of that hole you have right now? Well, I have less than a hole. You do have less than a hole. But do you but, know exactly how much? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if these fit. Okay. Because they look like they will. Okay. So if I put these on there. Oh, looky there. A half plus a fourth is equal to the same thing. Whoops, where was that half plus a fourth originally? Was equal to the same amount as one fourth. Whoops, I'm off the screen. Of one fourth, two fourths, plus three fourths. So it would be three fourths. So basically, you had to find a, a denominator that would work for both halves and fourths. Is that what that number down there is called? It's a denominator. A denominator. It's on the bottom. The bottom number is called the denominator. And what you just did with your fraction pieces was you found a common denominator. I just keep coming off the screen here. Denominator. How can I remember that's the bottom one? I don't know. Do you have a trick? It's down. It's down. It's the down one. So I found a common denominator between a half and a fourth. Right, because I traded that half. You traded that half for two fourths. I traded that half for two fourths. I made this thing two fourths. Uh huh. And I kept that at one fourth to and make my three fourths. You did. Okay. Let's try one more. One more? Yeah. Hmm. Make it hard. Make it hard. Well, I think I can handle something hard now. Okay. How about if we do one half? One half. Check. And this time, one third. Add one third. One half plus one third. It's not two fifths. It is not. That's not good. Nope. Okay. It's not two fifths. Here's your one half piece. Mm -hmm. And here's your one third piece. Okay, well, if I use the same thing I tried before, I tried to turn these all into thirds, so I could do this. But, but mm, that doesn't work, because that, that third is bigger than what I have left over to put it onto. You're right. So but I can't change it into thirds. What about some of the other pieces that we have? Is, is, are there any other pieces that we, we could make common? I'm going to try fifths, okay. because this is a two and a three and a five, so I'm going to try fifths. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, there's a little bit left in the middle, isn't there? This don't work. I'm going to try six. Okay. Try a smaller one. Okay. I think that's one. I'm going to kind of put it underneath it here so I can see that they line up. Okay. And then I can kind of see what I'm doing. The Ooh, six fit nicely on the half. That fits great on the half. Three six fits nice on the half. Mm -hmm. Let's see, maybe I'll get lucky. I think you got lucky. And two six fit nice on the third. So a half plus a third is one, two, three, four, five, six. It is. I'm gonna write that down. One half. One half plus one third equals five six. Can you show me what you changed the one half into like you did before? Mm -hmm. How many the six? one half was the three six. Right. So I made that into three six. And then the one third I changed into two six. So I added three six plus two six and got the five six. You're correct. Now, do you know how you got from one half? to three-sixths mathematically? No, but I do know this. I do know that two times three is six. You're right, and one times three is three. Ah, so this is times three. Mm -hmm. And then three times two is six, so one times two is two. So whatever I do to the bottom denominator yes I have to do to the top number what's the numerator the numerator I've got another idea for numerator what's that numerator I keep running out of room the numerator is starts with an n like north and on a map north is always up okay and 
So denominator is down. down. Denominator stands for down, and so it's the bottom number. Okay. I like the way you think. Okay. A mnemonic device to help you remember. Okay. So can we save the subtracting fractions for another math episode? I'm, I'm getting kind of tired. Okay. Okay. And, and guess what? what? It's going to be a lot the same. So I think once you get really good at addition, I bet you will be able to do subtraction. I'm not going to do the subtracting part today. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Glovely. And thank you for joining us in another episode of Math Snacks featuring Miss Glovely and Miss Wonderful. Okay, how about three and a half divided by three eighths? Wow, that's a hard one. That seems like that's going to be kind of difficult. And I think it would be helpful if we drew a picture of what that really looks like. Okay. So, here's one Hershey bar. Here's mm. another Hershey bar. Can you tell I'm hungry? Yum. Another Hershey bar and a half of another one. And I'm just going to dot it in so I remember that's half of the full. Okay. Hey, there's three and a half. Okay, if we're going to divide it in by three eighths, I would assume that means we need to break it into eighths, each of those bars. That makes sense. Okay. You know, I'm wondering, does that mean we just need to, that's right, right, four? That's correct. That because would be half of, half of a whole. Okay. I'm just wondering now how to think about, okay, we got three and a half and we want to divide it by three eighths, but what should we do next? Well, we, oh. You think, I don't know. I was just wondering. This is hard for me to picture in my head what it looks like. I'm wondering if we could look at a different problem. I think I made it too hard. Oh, okay. How about if we start with a whole number okay. and divide it by a fraction? Okay. So let's do 4 divided by, let's do an easier fraction. Okay. How about a half? Okay. Because 4 divided by a half is 2. Well, let's check with the picture form. If okay. you would draw four whole candy bars again. Four whole candy bars. Well, they're supposed to be the same. Well, we, we can understand. Okay. This isn't completely accurate, but and it's you, close enough. And you said we have to divide them in half? Mm-hmm. So do you only have two pieces now? You have two pieces in each? Oh, I have two pieces in each, but I don't have two. No. If I were going to take those candy bars and share them with friends, how many friends could have an equal portion right now? Well, one person could have this one. Okay. Two people could have this. Third person gets this piece. The fourth person gets this piece. Five, six, seven, eight. I could share with eight people. That's correct because you have eight whole pieces now that were half of the original full candy bar. Okay. So now. So my answer got bigger. Your answer actually got larger, and it was wow. a division problem. Hmm. Now, if we go from this idea back up here, we need groups of three-eighths to share with our friends. So this time, I might mark like this is one group of three-eighths. So this we could give to one person. That's correct. And then this would be another group of three-eighths. So now we can feed two people. That's right. And if we keep going with that pattern... I would really want more than that amount of candy bar, though. <laughs> Me too, because I really like chocolate. And what with my diet and all, I haven't been eating very much of it, so... Man, I don't know that I could just have three-eighths. You couldn't just stop there? I couldn't stop with three-eighths, because I kind of like chocolate, too. Okay. In fact, I like the king-size candy bars. <laughs> There are more of my stuff. We but can feed six people off of this. This is crazy. Why would you ever divide a candy bar? Maybe it's not a candy bar. What do you suppose it no, might I be? Don't know. What I, don't, I don't think it's a candy bar because nobody would share that amount of candy bars. Really? Because then we can feed eight people off of three candy bars and we still have a half left to go. Oh, well, looky there. We're at nine and now we have a problem because we're left with this one piece and we know right now that our answer is the whole number nine. But I've got this one piece left. It's an eighth. 
you think it's an eighth. You know what? A lot of people think that that would be an eighth because it was an eighth of the original. Mm -hmm. But now we've changed the size of our whole thing that we're feeding to three eighths. So let me ask you a real quick question. Mm -hmm. If we really could still play with this piece of the candy bar that isn't here on this I'll last one. I'll put dotted lines. Okay. Because it doesn't really exist. It doesn't really exist. Okay. But if this was still here, how many more pieces would I have to put with this one that we still have not marked so that we could feed another whole person? How many would we have to have? Well, we would have to have this. We have this one. Uh -huh. But we'd need this piece and this piece, too. So this piece that we have is one... Out of three. Out of three. So it's one... One... Third, third of, of the of the the pieces that we would normally have to have to feed a whole person. Hmm. So our answer to three and a half divided by three eighths is nine and one third. Not we could feed nine and one third person. You know what else helps me think about this is when I think about what this really. If I, I mean, I can read it three and a half divided by three eighths equals nine and a third. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It makes more sense to me if I think about it in a different form. Like if I think about it as saying, when I'm looking at that, I'm really asking how many three-eighths are in three-and-a-half. Okay. And you could even make that even more uh, real by putting it into a real-world problem. Like... Well, it's not the candy bars. It, let's so that's not real with the, three eighths. That, yeah, because you can you I, aren't satisfied mm -hmm. with only three eighths. So what if I had three and a half yards of ribbon, and to make a hair bow, I needed three eighths of the yard. I'm going to draw me a ribbon. Okay. And I and it's three and a half yards long. It's three and a half yards long. Okay. And then I want to know how many ribbons that are only three eighths. You're cutting them into three I'm eighths. I'm cut cutting them into three eighths of a yard. So basically, it could be kind of like that's a yard and that's a yard and that's a yard and this is half a yard. That would be good. So then you're kind of dividing these into eight. Yes, and I would be trying to find out how many pieces of ribbon. That would be a real world reason to divide fractions to begin mm -hmm. with. Or if you need to know how many costumes to get out of fabric or. All kinds of things. Like sure. That. Okay. Lots of different reasons to d divide fractions. I wonder why they always say invert and multiply. I think that's another math snacks. Okay, we'll wait till another time because I've been looking at these manipulatives and I'm really ready to play with them. Can I play with them next time? I think that's what we'll do. And so long for now. This is Miss Glovely and Miss Wonderful. Thank you for joining us for Math Snacks.